Welcome back. We revisit one of our top stories today. Amnesty International has announced that scores and probably hundreds of civilians have been massacred in a growing conflict in Tigray in northern Ethiopia. Witnesses are blaming forces loyal to the Tigray People's Liberation Front for Monday's killings, but Tigrayan officials have denied pro-TPLF troops were involved. Amnesty said that the victims appear to have been laborers not involved in the conflict, and this would be a first large scale killing of civilians in the conflict. For more on this crisis in Ethiopia, we're now joined via Skype by Depros Machena, who's Amnesty International's director for East and Southern Africa. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, just how much do we know about what's happened? Uh, and who the perpetrators may have been. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, it's, a, it's a real tragedy. We can confirm as Amnesty International that, uh, you know, a large scale massacre occurred in Tigray region and we're able to verify that and geolocate the actual place where the attack took place, as well as able to speak with witnesses we also commissioned an independent pathologist to look at uh, wounds on uh, dead bodies that we were able to look at and can now uh, confirm that, you know, indeed a massacre took place. The problem is that the place in Tigray State is closed in communication terms. And we've been asking and asking and urging the government in the federal government of Ethiopia to open up the area as a sign of accountability and transparency for their military operation so that human rights monitors and humanitarian workers are able to access the area and do their work. I mean, access must be difficult even with uh, the help and uh, guidance of uh, the authorities because if these people are able to do what they're doing, and we know that uh, the forces in Tigray are highly trained as well. Well, I don't know about highly trained, but clearly um, civilians are now being caught up mm. in the conflict. And we are urging both sides of the both parties to the conflict that they are accountable under international law uh, for war crimes that get committed. And the large number of people that are beginning to move out of the area into neighboring Sudan uh, reflect a growing refugee emergency crisis, both for Sudan and for Ethiopia. And in that respect, we're also calling upon uh, the Sudanese authorities to accept the people arriving and the parties to the conflict to allow people to leave. How many people do we know that have uh, already crossed into Sudan? And uh, I would imagine thousands more are, are, are already making plans to, to move across. Yes, uh, they, they are um, estimates. I think the UN uh, High Commission for Refugees um, has indicated that probably 11,000 uh, had crossed into Sudan, although the number could be higher, uh, and 50% of that are children. Uh, so this again represents a difficult circumstances for, uh, for children. And as you know, the area itself uh, in Tigray has 600,000 people were reliant on food aid before the conflict began. Uh, so that simply means the situation becomes untenable, both from a human, human rights standpoint, but also from a humanitarian standpoint. I'm just trying to understand how civilians get caught up in a conflict such as this. Why would the perpetrators kill innocent victims, people? It's a good question, and that's why we have asked for a thorough, independent, effective, and efficient investigation into the massacre so that the perpetrators are known and they are brought to justice under fair trial in competent courts. That is the only way you can create deterrent conditions for this kind of uh, senseless killing of ordinary people that are going about their business. Mm. Without that, impunity continues because it becomes an incentive to kill and go without consequences. The Prime Minister has been claiming victory in terms of putting down this uh, 
uh, what he calls a rebellion. And I just wonder, is that the information that you're getting, that the conflict is managed or does it continue? No, we cannot confirm that uh, the conflict has been managed. Uh, as yet or victory, we are looking into the human rights impact mm. uh, of this conflict and the importance of taking decisive measures that enable um, accountability to be established for what has happened. I think victory will be for others to declare. For us, it is really the impact on civilians that matters. All right, so the impact is continued. And wherever there's a mass movement of people, all sorts of other social problems develop. And this comes at in the middle of a global pandemic. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you, you have COVID-19 uh, is one of the issues that is a root cause of the current conflict. Because you will recall that around August, the government federal authorities suspended elections in uh, Ethiopia citing COVID-19 uh, dangers of holding such an election. The Tigray uh, region ignored that and conducted their own elections in which two million people voted. Uh, so on the one end, COVID-19 was used to stop elections in the country, but it continues to form the context which might have huge impact for people who are moving uh, from one country to the other because Sudan itself is its own problem. So indeed, you are right. Social tensions can emerge, but we really believe that the United Nations and Sudan authorities will do the responsible thing of protecting civilians who are fleeing the war. And uh, vulnerable among those uh, women and children. Uh, what have you been able to gather in terms of uh, their plight? Well, we, have no, we, we are still assessing both the growing impact because the numbers could be higher than what we have confirmed. We are also still assessing the makeup of people who are moving out of the country into Sudan. Uh, so our researchers are busy looking into um, the stories and documenting the testimonies of those who are arriving in Sudan in order to create a complete picture of both the cause, the nature of the attacks, uh, as well as who committed these heinous crimes in order for us to push for the next round of accountability that we need to be doing. Does Sudan have the capacity to uh, take in such a large influx and take care uh, of these people? Well, I wouldn't be able to know whether Sudan has the capacity. I can only talk to the responsibility of neighboring states mm. to ensure that they are able to provide the protection needed for refugees. But again, here, the United Nations will be working, as they already started to do, with Sudan authorities to ensure that such support is provided. This is a region that, as you know, has internally displaced people, have refugees. So it's something the region has been able to deal with in the past. I think we'll be calling on the region to do more uh, within the confines of international law. So access uh, is important in terms of uh, uh, being granted by the authorities. What else would uh, bodies like yours need to tell this story so that uh, people get the help that they need? Well, the, the important thing we have called for is the restoration of communication to Tigray, because that will be an act of accountability and transparency for the military operations that are currently underway. That will be very, very important because human rights monitors, humanitarian workers, aid workers need to access the area and do their job. That usually helps in moments of conflict. But when that is not happening, then a lot happens in the dark of the conflict. And that's what we are calling for immediately, restoration of communication lines and ensuring that civilians are protected. They have no part to play in the conflict. All right. I mean, it looks like this uh, situation is uh, developing and escalating uh, quickly. Um, what are your biggest fears uh, as we start to wrap up this uh, conversation? My biggest fears, uh, Peter, obviously, is, uh, um, you know, a war that you think you win militarily when you declare it can become longer uh, than the time frame you will have established. So a longer conflict can unfold in the country. Uh, it's a country that is already dealing with a series of challenges, including 
accusations of the federal government by various groups in Ethiopia, ethnic cleavages and human rights uh, violations of the past which have not been dealt with. Uh, in addition, I think a regional crisis could emerge uh, because uh, the conflict could spill over into uh, other countries already. We are seeing accusations from the north that uh, Eritrean forces are inside Ethiopia, although the Eritrean authorities have rejected that claim. Uh, we also know that Ethiopia contributes uh, a military component in Somalia uh, for the African Union contribution to the fight against Al-Shabaab. If it withdraws its force, that is an impact on Somalia's ability to withstand the uh, attack uh, from Al-Shabaab uh, that you know is already going on in Somalia. So I think it's something that needs to be dealt with strongly and in a, in a manner that demonstrates that the country needs to move forward. And that's why I think you're seeing the United Nations, the UK, the US are all putting pressure uh, on uh, Ethiopian authorities uh, to ensure that uh, the escalation that we have seen, uh, you know, does not uh, proceed any further. And for us, it is really the protection of civilians. It is the investigations of what has happened and bringing the perpetrators to justice uh, in fair trials. Mr. Mchenna, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, for uh, highlighting this uh, unfolding crisis. And let's just hope that uh, uh, the people most in need get the help that they require. Thanks so much indeed for your time. Thank you very much. All right, that's uh, Depros Mchena, who's the Amnesty International's director for East and Southern Africa, who was uh, talking to us via Skype about the unfolding humanitarian crisis that's taking place in uh, the Tigray region and the neighboring Sudan, where many of them have fled uh, to uh, escape the conflict that's uh, gripped the northern part of that country.